Well, I've got to say Saturday sucked. There's no better way to put it than that. It sucked. Uh, yesterday, I was going for 15 dime best bet winner, number six out of seven in college football. And I had Oregon. I had him at 15 and a half. The line did move to some places up to 16. I was feeling pretty good with the Ducks because Bo Nix was having a hell of a game yesterday. And the very first play of the fourth quarter, Oregon scores and they took the 36-14 lead. A couple of plays later, you know, next possession, USC comes down and scores. But I'm still feeling positive because the Ducks had controlled the line of scrimmage throughout. They drive down the field six and a half minutes ago. They settle for a field goal. Naturally, they miss the field goal. And then three minutes later, with three and a half minutes to go in the game, in fact, USC scores again. Game, set, match. The Trojans sneak in the back door. Ultimately, Oregon only wins 36 to 27. Eh. Here with the uh, video report, the complimentary plays after going 5-0-1 the previous Saturday. Yesterday, they go 3-5. and five. And again, that's how the cookie crumbles. Overall, the complimentary play run, 108-87 and 87 in all sports combined. Of course, in the NFL over the past seven weeks, 21-10 and 10 with the freebies. And I will get to your NFL freebies here in just a moment. Uh, to answer a question that many of you have asked in the comments section here recently, also through customer service at the site, demarcosports.com, will I be doing NBA and college basketball video reports? Yes, I've done them in the past. <laughs> I didn't have leukemia in the past. Uh, let's say I'm day to day. <laughs> I don't know. I will probably do them eventually, guys. But listen, I just had my third round of chemo uh, this past Monday at Ohio State. And uh it's beating the hell out of me. You have no idea. I mean, I may look happy now. I'm not happy. Um, and it's tough enough even to do these video reports and run the sites every day and do my analysis and put my site live. Um, and I've got to go through February or beginning of February with this. I have three more rounds to go. Yeah. You know, fatigue. It's a big word in my vocabulary at the moment. So, uh, God, I can't even imagine handicapping college basketball every single day. It's the hardest sport to handicap the NBA, I can do it in my sleep. Baseball, I don't even have to wake up from my sleep. The NFL and college football, I got to be honest with you, is kind of easy. College basketball, once you get into the groove, it's an easy sport, especially when conference play starts. But the outset of the season, my God, it's the worst sport in the world. And I understand why so many handicappers don't do it early in the season. They just kind of ignore college basketball until January. Big mistake because you can make a lot of money in non-conference play. So I will probably be doing them, but uh, hey, what can I say? Subscribe to the channel down there in the bottom corner uh, because the easiest way to find out when I'll have videos is by getting that little alert uh, here from the channel itself. So with that being said, let's get to your complimentary plays and let's run them in reverse chronological order. Let's take a look at the Sunday night game. Uh, the Raiders surprisingly are one point home underdog against the New York Jets. What have the Jets done to deserve to be a one-point favorite anywhere? Um, the one thing I noticed, and I can tell you from being a reporter, and I don't care what sport it has been, but when you're in a locker room after a coach or a manager has been fired, it's like a breath of fresh air. Everybody is suddenly relaxed. The tension, because the players know, they know something is going to happen. Once that, well, I'll tell you what, a guy from the New York Daily News, a report, and I won't name his name, one time I was in, and he was much older than me. And I mentioned something about that, about how the tension has just escaped the room. He said, <laughs> this is what he said to me. He said, remember when you're 13 and you had a zit on your face and you popped it, how good your face felt afterwards? He said, that's what happens when a manager gets fired. <laughs> and so right, he was so right. And that's what happens. And you saw that last week with the Raiders. Antonio Pierce came in, a guy who, a former player, a player's coach, relaxed attitude, made the quarterback change, going to former Purdue quarterback Aiden O'Connell, who doesn't have a big arm, but he's very good on the medium to short routes, and he gets rid of the ball quickly. Suddenly, they decide to find out that, hey, we paid Josh Jacobs all this big money. Let's go more to the zone read type of running style that he's so successful at. They pounded the ball, he had his, I think his best game of the season, 98 yards on 26 carries. O'Connell, 16 for 25, 200 yards, and the defense came to play. So against the Giants last week, the Raiders with Max Crosby with three of their, I think it was eight sacks. Now you're going to take on a Jets team 
who Zach Wilson was sacked eight times Monday night against the Chargers. Mm, seems like a formula to success there. You've got a Jets offense that's been anemic all year long. You've got a Jets team that's playing on a short week on the road. Again, how are the Jets favored in this game? I'll ride the Raiders, and I like Raiders in this one. Uh, you've got Dallas, minus 17 and a half. Biggest line in the NFL this year. I'll say this. You tell me, what reason would you have for backing the Giants with the points? I think the fact that the Cowboys lost last week at Philadelphia. Again, I gave you the Eagles last week as a complimentary play. I think that is even better motivation and greater incentive to take Dallas in this spot. Week number one, remember, Dallas goes to MetLife Stadium and wins 40 to nothing with Daniel Jones in the lineup, with a better offensive line for the Giants, with most of their star defender players in there. Darren Waller starting a tight end. You know, this is an injury riddled, lacking in confidence New York Giants team. I'll lay 27 and a half points. You have to go with Dallas. I mean, Dak Prescott has won 11 straight starts against them, right? Um, this is a Giants team that's on a 13-5 and five role as an ATS home favorite, but who the hell cares about that? It, it, I don't care. Oh, here's a good one. After a straight-up loss, the last 11 losses, the Cowboys have covered in 10 of them. Yeah, I'll go with it. I'll take the I'll, – I'll lay there, and then I'll go with them. Uh, I like Detroit, minus the three. Yes, the Chargers have been in two bad teams consecutive weeks, the Bears and the Jets. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. And now they're coming back on the short week, back to L.A., where they have absolutely no crowd support. You watch. There'll probably be more cheers for the Lions here in Southern California today than for the Chargers. You have a Lions team that's coming off a bye. And because of that bye, now they've got David Montgomery back. So you've got Montgomery, who last played four weeks ago, back in the backfield with Jamar Gibbs, who's coming off a career game in week number eight against the Raiders, where he had 26 carries, 152 yards. You've got that offense against a Chargers team that has also been anemic offensively when you think about it. Sure, the Chargers have a decent pass rush, but this Lions team has just been such a moneymaker. 15-3 and three ATS roll, 7-2 and two their last nine on the, roll, uh, on the road. Uh, nine and two ATS off their last 11 buys. Lions are minus three. I'm buying down the half point in here. And uh, yeah, I just like the uh, Lions. I wish the Lions pass rush would be a little bit more consistent. You know, I was reading about the Lions here today. They're 21st in the league in sack percentage at only 7.5%, but they've got three games with five or more sacks. They've got five games with one or no sacks. I think Aiden Hutchinson hasn't had a sack since week number five, but you know that Chargers offensive line has some issues. You know the Chargers haven't been able to run the ball effectively since week number one against Miami. So I think Detroit's going to be able to key on, uh, key on the uh, pass rush today and get some pressure on the Chargers, and that's why I like the Lions in this spot. Um, hmm, this is an interesting game. You know, I just want to point this out here. Uh, the Cincinnati game. Oh, you know what? Hey, let's do something here. Let's run down the rest of the game. So your official free picks, okay? Your official free picks are the games I just talked about, okay? And if I had to rate them in order, I like, I know you're going to laugh here. I like the Cowboys, number one, the Raiders, number two, and the Lions, number three, okay? That's your order. Again, Cowboys, <laughs> yeah, Cowboys, and the uh, Raiders and the Lions, okay? And let's just quickly run down all the other games because I had to handicap them anyway, okay? Um, obviously, uh, I can't talk about the uh, the uh, Cleveland-Baltimore game because that's my best bet on the board today. Uh, Indianapolis, New England, who the hell cares? I don't care about that game. And if you're going to watch that game first thing in the morning, God bless you, it's in Germany. Houston and Cincinnati. Just be alert here of this game. Yes, it's been a one-sided series in favor of Houston. Uh, I would normally say Cincinnati because the Bengals were my best bet last week, but there's some major injury concerns for the Bengals here. Jamar Chase with the back injury, 64 catches. They're optimistic he will play here, but it's probably going to be a game-time decision. And remember, the Bengals are already without T. Higgins. They're also coming off the big game against the Bills. And before everybody crowns C.J. Stroud as the next big thing in the NFL after that huge game against um, 
Tampa last week. And, and granted, it was a big game, 470 yards and five touchdowns. Remember, the week prior, he had 140 yards passing in the loss at Charlotte, okay? And also, keep in mind that the reason I backed the Bengals last week was because how Joe Burrow's got his wheels under him again. The last two games, Burrow, 59 for 75, 631 yards and five touchdowns. He's going to be playing against the third worst pass defense in the league today, a Texans defense that has 17 sacks in eight games. That's allowing opposing quarterbacks to hit 70.6% of their passes. Do I like the Bengals? Yeah. Minus six. I'm just a little worried. So I like Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati would be a great team, however, to put in a two-team seven-point teaser in this spot. San Francisco-Jacksonville, very interesting game. I think this is a must-win game for the 49ers coming off the bye. I do think they are better than Jacksonville. But do you get the 49ers team that was a terror in a 5-0 and start, or do you get the Jack uh, San Francisco team that just seemingly lost it all before their bye? So I lean a little towards San Francisco. New Orleans and Minnesota, damned if I know in that matchup between Derek Carr and Josh Dobbs. Green Bay and Pittsburgh. Okay, the Packers won a game last week. Big deal. I don't know how the Steelers win games, but if I had to bet this game and you put a gun to my head, I would go ahead and lay the three points with the Steelers in the year and buy down the half point. Tennessee and Tampa. The who cares game of the week as far as I'm concerned. Go figure with Tampa. They score 36 total points in three consecutive losses, and then they go and, what, put 37 on the board last week at Houston, which, by the way, is once again a testament to how bad the Houston defense really is. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd probably say Tennessee. Oh, here's another lousy game. So Murray's coming back for Arizona today. What does that mean? I mean, what form or what Kyle Murray, what are we going to get with Murray? I mean, did we know what we had with him when he was healthy? And James Conner's coming back, too. So maybe the ground game is going to be productive. I mean, the Cardinals have held their own defensively at times. And the Falcons, I don't know what's going on with their offense. I, I don't think this is a bettable game. I really don't. I mean, if you're compelled to bet that game, you've got issues. Uh, and then uh, Washington and Seattle. I think this is a must-win game for Seattle after that no-show last week at Baltimore. Time of possession in that game, only 19 minutes and 56 seconds. Sam Howe looked great against the Patriots last week, 29 for 45, 325 yards. You know, against the Patriots, and against the um, the Eagles his last couple of games, he's looked great. But you know, it's Sam Howe. In some weeks, he looks like Joe Namath reincarnated. In other weeks, eh, he doesn't. I, I like Seattle. I think Seattle is also a team that you consider in a two-team teaser today. So those are all the other games on the board. I just wanted to quickly run them down. That'll do it, guys. Good luck to everybody, and talk to you again soon.